Hi, it's me, Tim Dodd, the Everyday Astronaut. Welcome to Houston, Texas, home of NASA's Johnson Space Center. And I'm here to show you guys something really exciting. Boeing actually sent me out here to check out the Boeing CST-100 Starliner. So this is one of America's next rides to space. We're actually going to be sending astronauts on this thing up to the International Space Station as early as 2019. And I actually got to sit at the commander's seat and pilot it to see how I do. So what might take some astronauts four years, I did in about four hours. Let's see how I did. Let's get started. Three, two, one, zero, and NASA recently announced who will be flying on the first commercial crew flights, and both Boeing and SpaceX are racing to get their spaceships, their launch sites, and their spacesuits ready to return humans to space from U.S. soil. Boeing's spaceship is the CST-100 Starliner, a capsule-shaped spacecraft that can fly up to seven astronauts to space. For NASA missions to the International Space Station, it'll fly up to four astronauts at a time, filling the rest of the capsule with cargo. The Starliner will launch on top of perhaps one of the most reliable rockets ever made, ULA's Atlas V with two strap-on solid rocket motors and two RL-10 upper stage engines, a configuration that an Atlas V has never actually flown before. But all the hardware has been flown many times throughout history. And today, I get to take you where the astronauts train and show you the actual hardware they use to get ready for this next chapter of US spaceflight. In order to get a better sense of what it will be like to fly the Starliner, I met up with Tony Castilleja from Boeing, somewhere deep in the middle of Johnson Space Center. So, we've been driving around a lot, and to be honest, I kind of have no idea where I actually am. So, where am I? You're on Earth. Okay, that's in good. Texas, <laughs> yes. In Houston, uh -huh. at NASA's Johnson Space Center. Yes. In the home of the Space Vehicle Mock-Up Facility, where every astronaut is trained to go to space. And this is the home of astronaut training for that next generation space capsule. That is so awesome. I really want to see it. You ready? Yeah, let's do it. Let's go for it. There she is, the Boeing Starliner yes. CST-100, flying to the International Space Station, and we're training in that vehicle now. And uh, rumor has it, you guys are, for some reason, going to let me go inside it. Well, we're training today, so if you're an everyday astronaut, we got to train all of them. <laughs> let's do this. You ready to give it a spin? This is my first time actually being an everyday astronaut. Normally it's just me in like a bathtub or something. This is uh, significantly uh, a little more sophisticated. Well, this is real, <laughs> this is actual size, and this is how we train. Oh my gosh, that's amazing. It'll be fun. Then I met Kavya Kamal Maniapu. She's the flight crew operations and test engineer for the Starliner. After swapping out my hat for a safety hat, she taught me how to get in and out of the Starliner or in other words, ingress and egress. Luckily, I also follow instructions about as well as a, a baby goat floating in a pool of butter. So let's see how I do. Float on over. This will be a lot easier in zero G, I think. Yes. <clears throat> but this isn't too bad. I'll go next to the commander, which is the pilot seat. So I'm commander, you're pilot? That's correct. Uh, but who does the who does the majority of the actual flying? The commander. So our our vehicle is built to be autonomous. Right. You take control in a inadvertent situation where the crew has to jump in and take manual control. Well, let me tell you a little story. <laughs> so for the first probably year of flying Kerbal Space Program, I didn't even know you could do like stability control. So I was flying manually. So if you guys need someone to steer this thing around willy-nilly, all manual-like, you got the right guy here. So, if you remember the space shuttle, there were thousands of switches. Yeah. And the amount of switches that you see on the console in front of you is the number of switches that are going to be in the vehicle. We've really optimized and taken advantage of exactly the cargo vehicles and the autonomous vehicles, yeah. which give you just the minimum amount of switches necessary to keep this vehicle what we call safe, wow. or a safing ability mm -hmm. at any point in the flight. Wow. Okay, let's pause here for a second. See those screens, or where there's normally a screen and for now there's just that blue cover? Despite having large screens to display a lot of useful information, they are not touch screens. Inputs happen via the buttons on the edges of the screen. Every button pushed has a visual cue, an audio cue, and the actual physical tactile cue as well. The Starliner features a large window directly above the commander's head. They definitely get the best view in the house. 
There's another smaller window on the side hatch and one on the docking port, but the commander's window is certainly the best. While we're talking about features of the Starliner, perhaps one of the most unique features is the fact that the Starliner will land on land using parachutes and giant airbags as opposed to landing in water like most capsule designs. This is similar to the Russian Soyuz capsule which lands on land in the middle of Kazakhstan. The Starliner will be the first orbital capsule to land on land in the US. And notice I said it'll be the first orbital capsule since Blue Origin's suborbital New Shepard capsule lands on land too. There are five landing sites proposed in the western United States, but the two prime sites will be the US Army's White Sands Missile Range in New Mexico and the Army's Dugway Proving Ground in Utah. Landing on land definitely gives a leg up in reusability, considering the capsule won't land in corrosive salt water. This will help allow the Starliner to be reused up to 10 times. That's impressive. Of course, the Starliner is capable of landing in water too, but that most likely would only be the case if the Starliner had to perform a launch abort. And the nice thing Crazy. about our system, you talked about the abort system on Apollo being, we call it the tractor or the puller. Mm -hmm. What we have is the pusher, so our right. abort system is on the bottom yes. of us on the service module. So yes. In an inadvertent situation, you have to evacuate from the launch pad or mm -hmm. the launch vehicle. Those four engines fire up and take you about a mile up and mile out yep. uh, to land you in the water if you're on the launch pad. Yeah. Before we left the egress ingress trainer, Kavya and Tony challenged me to complete a certification. Astronauts are required to be able to put on their spacesuits all by themselves inside the capsule in under seven minutes. All right, so I think it's my turn now to actually see if I can suit up. Yes. I mean, I've done this, I've done this a couple times, a time or two, but this is actually the first time I've done it with any real intention. So, this actually, when you when you first said, uh, it honestly sounded a little scary. Like I, I didn't know if it was gonna be hard or not. But sitting in here now, it's this is no problem. And think about it, you'll be in zero-G if you have to don the suit for a cabin leak scenario. Yeah. Um, and so you can actually use up all the volume up there. Right, you can just be hanging out right up here. Yeah, trying to... I, I feel like I'd be clumsy enough that I'd end up kicking people's faces and things. <laughs> so I'd probably opt for this, but... Yeah, this is... This is significantly uh, roomier than I imagined it would be. Let's fast forward here ten times. I've put the suit on so many times, I should have no problem getting it on in under the seven minutes that's required. Don't forget the binoculars, those are important. Undo this. <laughs> Once I was fully suited up, I got strapped in for a quick photo op. So now that I've been trained in how to actually get in and out of the Starliner, why don't I see what it's like to fly one? For that, we're going to head over to the mission simulator and training facility. Here, I would get to go check out the two different training simulators as well as Boeing's spacesuit. So before I tried flying the Starliner, I first suit up in a real spacesuit. If you didn't catch what it's like for me to actually put one of these on and wear it, be sure and check out this video. So left seat's yours, Commander Dodd. Oh, <laughs> Commander Don, I like the way that sounds. Just pop over here. Now it's time for Boeing software engineer Jim May to teach me how to actually fly the Starliner. Thank you. Okay. Just hop on up. Watch the helmet behind you. Okay. All right, jump in. Okay. Is the helmet comfortable? You're going to have to lean a little bit forward because that is a very hard seat. But This goes here. There we go. The book goes far. All right. Oh, yeah. Now, do you hear noise in the headset? Um, yeah, I do. I know that a lot of this stuff uh, we can't actually show on screen, so I, I apologize to you guys. But this is amazing. <laughs> like, uh, this is going to be really exciting. I can't. OK, watch your right arm here. OK. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, we're going to need that. Since I can't show you what's on the screens, I'll describe it. Basically, Boeing developed a way to show your position relative to your target and shows where you're about to be. It is surprisingly easy to understand. But now, Jim actually gave me the controls. It's my time to show him just what I've got. So, uh, I mean, you've played a little bit of Kerbal Space Program, so let's look, I mean, these screens look normal? This, this yeah, yeah, this actually looks pretty familiar to me. And, and I think you mispronounced the word little with uh, an obsessive <laughs> amount of, say, Kerbal Space Program. 
I mean, you're basically an aerospace engineer at this point. <laughs> so down, also in front of you, you've got your distance to the station over here. Okay, 10. 6, 10. Meters. 6 meters. You've got your relative velocity. Right now you're sitting pretty still. The vehicle's in autopilot holding about 10 meters away. Okay. Um, when we get going, you're going to want to make this about minus 0.04. Minus 0.04. Correct. Each pulse will be a 0.01 pulse for this. So part. four little pulses will pulse get me to my... Yep. Oh, wow. Okay. Right. Everything changed. So, so we're in run. Um, we need to do a couple things first. Okay. Right now the joysticks are turned off. The okay. autopilot's in control. So okay. right above your left hand there's a manual control. Okay. Flip the flight control button up. Flight control button is up. Okay. Flight control is now on. Okay. okay. Um, primary control. We want to turn the pulse control on for trans. So there's a panel. Primary control right in the middle. Primary control right in the middle. Okay. Trans is the translation hand controller. From okay. the bottom, pull the cover up on the pulse button and push okay. that. So now you are in manual pulse control. Okay. Go ahead and grab the joystick and give gotcha. yourself a forward thrust. Forward thrust of one. There we go. So you see how the point point one, move? Three. Yep. yep. And all right. So give about three more. 0 0.02, 0 0.03, and here we come up on 0 0.04. Looking good. Gotcha. So, I, but you're saying I can go up at like, I can blast my way up to like 0 0.2 meters per second, and then scrub off that velocity right before we get there, and just really impress everyone down at Mission Control, right? I mean, <laughs> they'd be a little worried, and then you'd be you'd be firing a bunch of uh, a bunch of thruster gas at the station. But you know, that's not a big deal. And here it comes. Um, on, on. Contact. Contact. Capture. capture. Successful dock. Houston, we're, we're here. We made it to the International Space Station. I did it. <laughs> Guys, I, I didn't ruin anything. <laughs> oh, I didn't even notice up there. Was that running the whole time, too? <laughs> it was. You were seeing the station and uh, not even looking. <laughs> I wasn't even looking. I could have been looking out at space this whole time. Dang it. One meter. Contact. Contact. And capture. capture. Look at that. Successful six yes. stop. Docking. Yes, thank you. I actually did it. I can. I did a thing. I did a thing. <laughs> that was that was pretty hard. Actually, that took a good amount of concentration. I did. After a few more successful dockings, it was time to change back into my normal clothes so I could see where astronauts can train in a more casual environment. In the room next door is a more mobile setup. I did a few more dockings with even less help from Jim, which was actually kind of scary. But had I known he was just watching replays of me playing Kerbal Space Program and shopping on my website, I don't think I would have been as nervous. Man, it's so crazy. It's so cool though. It's really fun looking at the future here and realizing that we're very, very, very close to seeing people uh, actually flying in this and this will be going to space. Returning our crews to the International Space Station, flying from the US soil. It's really exciting and I, yeah, I can't wait. I'll be there. I'll bring you guys there, we're going to watch it, and we are going to cheer it on the whole way, and we're going to tell you every square second about it. It's going to be amazing. Man, that was awesome. I'm more excited than ever for the commercial crew program. I can't thank Boeing enough for flying me and my crew out to Houston to see the Starliner and their spacesuit. So, thank you for showing me your world. And I also owe a special thanks to Space Center Houston for showing me around their amazing museum that's just outside of Johnson Space Center. Be sure and let me know in the comments below if you have any questions about the Starliner, Boeing, the Commercial Crew Program, the Atlas V, or anything else space related. I owe a huge thanks to my Patreon supporters for helping make videos like this and all other content possible. As a thanks to those who support this show, I'm now doing giveaways every 100 patrons. It'll always be some kind of flown space material like this, pieces of space shuttle. So if you want some chance to win some actual flown space hardware, or want to hang out in our exclusive subreddit or our exclusive Discord channel, head on over to patreon.com slash everydayastronaut. Thank you. And while you're out there on the grand old internet, head on over to my website, everydayastronaut.com, where you can find pre-launch previews of all upcoming rocket launches. That's right, you finally don't have to ask me what's gonna happen on this upcoming mission on Twitter. You can go there to my website and you can find out, are they gonna land this one? Is this one gonna recover a fairing? Where's this mission going to? When's it launch? All the things you need to know in one easy to find place. 
And then while you're there, head on over to my shop and check out my new awesome shirts like this. F1 engine can be on your chest. EverydayAstronaut.com Thanks everybody, that does it for me. I'm Tim Dodd, the Everyday Astronaut, bringing space down to Earth for everyday people.